All right, guys, welcome to day two of boot camp. I am Monica Perry. If I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you, I'm the Market Center Tech Trainer for Winston-Salem, Greensboro, and Chapel Hill Market Centers. I'm so excited you guys are all here with us today. And today we're going to be going over the most important part of command, which is opportunities. And I say it is the most important because that is how we make sure that you get paid. That is how our compliance officers make sure that we keep you out of real estate jail. Opportunities, real estate jail is not real, y'all, but they do have fines. <laughs> so that's why our compliance officers do go through and check all your paperwork for you. Um, opportunities is actually a big platform too. We talked about how much was going on in contacts yesterday. Same thing with opportunities. We have a lot built into that system. And in fact, I used to actually pay separately $100 a month for a system that does one little bitty thing that is housed in opportunities for y'all for free. So we're going to try to touch on all of that fun stuff today. And we are heading into agent.kw.com where we are going to log in with our KW credentials. Does anybody have any questions before we get started? All right, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop your resources into the chat. Bear with me one sec. And I'm gonna copy the link and drop this down into the chat. As always, if you guys have any questions, please, 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 this is your time, so ask them. I probably get more questions about opportunities in DocuSign than I do anything else in the entire platform. So please make sure that you're asking questions. Of course, you can always come to me after the fact. This is going to be recorded. I did want to show you guys. Um, I promised you that these would be updated on your resources site, and I did that. So if you are in Winston-Salem and Greensboro, you're going to go to KW triadtech.com and that should be on your resources guide again that's kw triadtech.com and hopefully this will cooperate with me there we go so over here on the left you will now see that the july 2022 boot camp videos are here so if you click for the videos it is going to take you directly to youtube directly to the playlist for the july version of boot camp Okay, so I just wanted to make sure. And then of course, my Chapel Hill folks, you are going to head to kwtriangletech.com. And again, the only difference between those two websites are your property resources and your realtor resources over on the right-hand side of the screen because you guys are in a different market. So I changed out the counties. Other than that, the content is the same. Everybody good? Anybody have any questions on that? Cool deal. Okay, so let us go on to command. Okay, so yesterday we looked at all things contacts, adding contacts, setting up saved searches, putting contacts on smart plans. We kind of Brushed over smart plans, there's a lot happening there. So we'll deep dive into a little bit of that later in the week as well on Thursday. Um, but today we're going to focus on opportunities. So I want to show you that there are two ways to create an opportunity. So we're going to stick with Mr. Dakota Perry and go into his contact that we created yesterday. Okay, so here we go. Within Dakota's contact card, there is a tab for opportunities. Okay, so from a contact, I can click on the opportunities tab and then click create opportunity over here on the right. So that is one way that you can create an opportunity is directly from within your contact card. Most of you are only going to be in one market center, unlike me. Then you're going to pick your opportunity type. You're going to go through and fill out this form, okay? But one thing I want to draw your attention to, because I know quite a few of you are in Productivity Coaching 1, which is a team 
or you are on a team, okay? So you're gonna see up here in the upper right, okay? The team is not highlighted. Since I'm the rainmaker, I have an individual pipeline and I have a team pipeline. Depending upon how your team is set up in command, you may or may not have the ability to go back and forth between your personal and your team. So yours might have Pro Coach 994, Pro Coach 509, Pro Coach 685 here under the team or your team name up here in the team. If that is the case, you're going to notice that Dakota is on my personal account. So back here in the background where it's grayed out, you can see the account says Monica Perry. That is my personal account. So if I attempt to create a team opportunity with Dakota Perry, he is not going to show up, okay? Because Dakota is on my personal side of command, okay? If I try to create it just on my personal pipeline, then Dakota is going to show up right there and I can pick him as the client, okay? So with that being said, I wanna show you guys how to switch a contact into your team side. Because remember yesterday, I told you best practice, we're going to add our sphere of influence contacts to our personal command. Okay, we're gonna add them to our personal command. And then we're going to move them to the team if we're going to transact, okay? So I'm gonna take um, this test contact one and open it up. So you're gonna see the account says Monica Perry, the owner is Monica Perry, right? I can come up to these three dots and I can click change account and I can move it to the team and confirm change account. That's way number one. Way number two, I can click from my list of contacts, the checkbox, and I can come up to bulk action. And the very last option is to change the account. And it gives you a heads up. If you had that contact on a monthly neighborhood nurture in your personal account, for instance, and then you move them to your team to have a transaction. It is going to remove them from that smart plan that was on in your personal account, okay? It gives you that warning here. So then you're going to confirm change account. And see now, looking for more, there are 22 contacts in your team account that match. I can click switch right here. And so test, Contact one should now be there. I don't know how I had it written. Should have paid more attention. But nonetheless, it's gonna move it over here. Let me open one up so you can see it. And then it will say the account is the team account, okay? You will maintain ownership of the contact, which is important, and you will be the assignee of the contact. That means that it's your contact, you own it, you moved it to your team, you're gonna have a transaction with them, you're gonna always keep ownership of the contact. Does that make sense? Vice versa, if I was to add a contact, you can see in the upper right, I'm in the team. So I'm gonna say test uh, July boot camp. And I'm gonna make their email test July boot camp at gmail.com and save it because I wanna show you guys the difference. This says the account is the elite helpers, which is okay. But look at the owner, it's the team. That's why I tell you guys to create it in your personal account and then move it over. 
because it was your contact, right? You owned it. It was your neighbor, your best friend, your aunt, whoever, okay? That is your contact to keep regardless if you're on the team or not. So best practice is definitely to create them under the team. I know that's a lot to take in, but I wanted to make sure that I reiterated it to you because at KW, our people are our people, right? And so it's not that your team wouldn't release your contacts to you if you were to leave. It just causes a lot more work. If you own it, you control it. You can move it back and forth at will. If you make it under their team, then one of their administrators or the Rainmaker themselves has to go in and release the ownership and do all this kind of stuff. Does that make sense? I just wanted to make sure that I touched on that. Cool. Okay. Now let's look at the second way to create an opportunity and that's to go to the handshake and that's because I want you guys to see this pipeline so don't forget if you forget the names of these applets on the left you can hover over the top or you can click the white kw on the red background and see what they are all called okay <clears throat> and you have your pipelines here so your green pipeline is your listings your orange pipeline is your buyers your purple pipeline is for those of us crazy enough to handle leases, right? I have one rental property and that's quite enough for me, causes enough issues, okay? Down here below is your ratios. How many listings do you have? How many buyers do you have? How many leases do you have? What is your trend line showing you, right? Are you increasing the number of transactions? You can switch this between all opportunities, listings, buyers, landlord, and tenant. And then at the very bottom, you have a list of what is closing this month. What's the closing date? What is your commission going to be? What's the volume, right? What phase is it in? Under contract, active, like what's going on with it? So you have that nice summary down here at the bottom. Okay. So that's kind of the overview down here and then you can also go to this little gear icon and i want to discuss this with you guys here in a minute that's going to take you back into those settings that we were in yesterday okay and i'm going to show you why here in just a minute so one thing i always like to teach you guys and if you didn't get to come to the day of command with the carolinas region i'm going to drop that into the chat for you guys Go to YouTube real quick. If you want to really deep dive into just opportunities in the checklist, I went over it quite in depth. We don't have time to do that today because I'm more working on the transactional aspect with you. Carolina, I can't type. KW Carolinas. There we go. So we did a day of command. <clears throat> My opportunities day there, I go into this in details. I'm gonna drop this in the chat for you guys. And plus my other MCTTs around the state and South Carolina, everybody did an awesome job. So please feel free to check out their videos as well. We did one on contacts, one on smart plans and mine on opportunities and then one on campaigns, okay? Um, but what we discussed in that class is the fact that you can set up checklists. Now for now, if you're on a team, more than likely your team has checklists set up for you, okay? But if you're not on a team, if you're watching us on YouTube, if you're not in productivity coaching, I'm just going to click into any phase or stage here. So I'm gonna click into my listing active on this little house, okay? It's gonna bring me into this view where it's showing me cards of all of the transactions I have going right now. At the top of that, I can edit stages, okay? So like I said, command was built by agents for agents and there were five phases that agents agreed that we have. Cultivate, I do wanna buy a house, but it's gonna be six months. I do wanna sell my house, but I can't do it until my kids graduate from high school, right? the cultivate phase. Yes, I'm going to transact with you, but it's not gonna to be today. So we have people cultivating. The act, the appointment phase, right? I'm setting the appointment, I'm getting my listing agreement ready. 
Um, we're setting the date, we're setting the time, they're getting the house painted, this is happening, that's happening, right? The active phase, we're just listed, we're having showings, we're doing an open house, all those things happen when it's active, under contract, obviously you get an offer, you go under contract, and then close. Those were the five phases that all agents in KW that were involved in building command agreed happen with every transaction, okay? And so that's why on the pipelines, you see cultivate appointment active under contract and closed. However, within each of those phases, that's where the agreement stopped. And this person said, well, I need to have a just listed period because we do a ton of stuff when we just list a property. And this person was like, well, I need one for open houses and nobody could agree. So this is where Keller Williams gave us the ability to edit these pipelines to our specific business, okay? So again, I've clicked into one specific phase. I'm in active listing. I'm gonna come up to the top and click edit stages. Um, Gabby, are, the, are you talking about the YouTube videos for the Carolinas? Are they on the tech site? I think I have a link to um, the Carolinas Okay. YouTube channel on there. Um, and it's also linked at the bottom of my YouTube channel. Okay. So now we have staging, just listed, showing, open house, and negotiations. These are my phases that I have set up. Monica's phases. Okay. And for each one of these, I have checklists. So when I'm staging, I need to make sure I've got the photographer coming. I need to put a sign at the house. If I'm using a home warranty writer, if I'm going to put a lending sign next to my for sale sign, am I using a walk box? Did the photography did, did the photography get completed? Marketing materials created, property put into the MLS, all the things that I need to do when I'm listing a house, I've created a checklist for it. Okay. And so then I have the ability to turn these into client updates by checking this box over here. And that means if I check it off that I did it in a specific opportunity, then my client is going to get an email that looks like this. Updates for your listing. Dakota, we're checking things off the list. Here's a summary of tasks we completed. For your listing, this is actually Jeff Nicholson's listing. Shout out, Jeff. Thanks for letting me use it. Um, for 5651 Farmstead Road in Pofftown, we posted your list, your just listed on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We mailed out a just listed postcard to 200 of your neighbors, right? That is because I have checklists set up for all of my opportunities. If it falls into listing, active, staging, 15 checklist items are going to be attached it's right here, right? 15 items. Everybody good with this? Now, that's the first thing that needs to happen. This is why I used to pay $100 a month for was client updates when I checked off items on a checklist. For real, because number one thing clients want is communication. Um, you guys don't have to use this part. I just like to show you that it's there, okay? The next thing you have to do is make sure that that specific opportunity has its client updates turned on. So you see this one where it says client updates are turned on for this opportunity. Then I have to check that I did something that also had a client update. Does that make sense? So you have a couple of pieces that you have to do to make it all work together, but that's because maybe this person's like, I don't want all that email. Mm -mm. Then you can just leave it turned off. But this person's like, I want to know every single thing that you're doing to get my house sold. Then you can turn this person's on, right? Monica. And go ahead. All right. Can you, um, is it just for the client? So can you start, turn on certain client? I, never mind. You're just showing it. I was going to ask if you could check for emails for certain updates and not for every single one. Yes, exactly. Okay, that's, that's a great question. Allison. So <laughs> when you're setting up your checklist, so again, we are in a specific area. We come to edit stages. 
we have all of our little stages underneath here. So in staging, I don't need them to know that I'm texting them to tell them the photographer's coming. Don't forget to move your cars out of the driveway. They don't need to be notified that I texted them. I texted them, right? So that one is not going to be a client update. But I placed the sign at your house. Maybe I want them to know that. Obviously, they're going to see it, but I'm giving them a list of things that I did, okay? So they don't need to know that I put a home warranty rider on my sign or that I'm putting a winding sign out there. Maybe I do want them to know that I put the lockbox out, the photography got completed, the marketing materials have been created, I uploaded your property to the MLS, right? Those things might be things that I want them to know. And that I ran a Facebook ad if I did for their home or did just listed postcards, right? Those are things that they would want to know. So for those, I check off client update. And one thing to keep in mind, <clears throat> make sure the verbiage faces the client, right? For me, I might just need it to say, create Facebook posts. For them, I need it to say, we posted your listing on Facebook, exclamation point, right? So make sure if it's going to be a client update that the verbiage is a client update, okay? Now, for all of you asking in your brains or in the chat, did you create that list? Yes, I did create this list. And yes, it is available for you. On your resources guide, it says Monica's Opportunity Checklist, okay? So you're gonna open this up. It's just a Google sheet. I broke it down just like command is broken down. Okay. We're in the listings one. I made it green because the listing pipeline is green. At the bottom, you can switch over to buyers, which is orange. And there it is. And this is one of the many times you'll hear me say this this week. Sit down with your favorite beverage. Turn on your favorite music. I chose Frank Sinatra and a glass of wine. And I sat here and I copied back and forth. Does it take time to set it up? Yes. Is it worth it in the end? Yes. <laughs> I was notorious for forgetting, look at all the stuff y'all that we have to remember as agents, right? Now, back in 2008, when I started selling, I had paper checklists and Allison, you work with Wendy. She still has paper checklists. That's okay. If y'all wanna use paper checklists, good on you. He, I mean, it's your business. You're an independent contractor. It's only my job to show you that this does exist for you to use if you want to use it, right? So what I do like about this, once you've copied it and put it all into command, and I'll show you really quickly how I did that, I just split my screen in half when I'm working on something like this, like so, and bear with me, if it wants to cooperate, that would be nice. I do not want to split my screen into fourths right now, thank you. There we go. So what I did, I was in listing. I was in listing staging right here, okay? Listing, staging, open checklist. Down here at the bottom is where you click add item. So I literally click add item. Then I come over here, I right click and copy, right click, paste, save, copy right? Just back and forth until it's done. Now, I have asked, can't we just set this up for the whole market center and they can delete out what they want? Maybe that'll come one day, but that day is not today. Sorry, right? This is what we have for now. Um, but at least I gave you my checklist. Now, that doesn't mean your checklist is going to exactly match my checklist because this was mine, right? This was stuff I did. So you can add to it, take away from it, whatever you want to do right? But at least you have kind of an outline. Um, but if you are on a team or you are on productivity coaching, um, if you're on, I know if you're on product, productivity coaching in Winston-Salem, Keon took my checklist and put it into command and added to and took away some whatever that he wanted you guys to do for productivity coaching, okay? So it should be there. Go in there and look. Click into your opportunity. Click into a phase click edit stages, and you should see some checklist items there, okay? Now, that little gear icon I told you about is for client updates. 
if you click it, it's going to take you back into your settings. We were hanging out in there yesterday, but we didn't look at this part. And it's going to allow you, when it loads, settings is slow, y'all. Just letting you know, it always takes time, but there is a lot back there. So it's going to show you your team, more than likely if you're in PC coaching, your personal pipeline if you're a single agent, right? You can choose when you want it to send. I chose 5.30 p.m. because by that time I've done what I needed to do for the day. My client hopefully is home from work. They're going to get that email. These are the things we did for your listing today. I can choose, do I want it to go to the client and co-client or only to the primary client? Do I also want to send it to the owner means me or your rainmaker, right? If you're in productivity coaching in Winston-Salem, the owner of your transactions is Keon, okay? So that means that Keon will get an email that shows what went to your client. That means the owner of the opportunity, okay? All right. So I do get copied when one of those goes out. And then here on a team version, you can choose, do you want to get it? You would be the assignee. Keon would be the owner or whoever your PC coach or whoever your rainmaker is. And who is it coming from, right? If you're on a team. So that's going to take you back to the settings. Okay. I know it's a lot. You know, again, you don't have to use it to start off. I just want to show you guys that it's that it exists there. Okay. So now let's see. Da, 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 da. We looked at checklist, looked at all that fun stuff. I want you to pay attention to your resources. Make sure you're picking your office. Okay. KW Elite is Winston Salem. KW One is Greensboro. KW United is Chapel Hill. So whichever office you're in, that is your path to get paid. Okay, this is the most important thing for you guys to learn today. A lot of agents love this because it gives them a visual. Okay, your opportunities applet is a workflow. People pay millions of dollars for workflows and you have one. Okay, so if you follow this path, you should be successful in completing your transaction. So don't, if you're going to print, if you're a printer, print this out and tape it up somewhere. Don't print it out and throw it on your desk and let it get buried because then the next time you do an opportunity, you're going to forget all about it, right? This is how every transaction should roll. We create our opportunity. And if you're going to use DocuSign or DotLoop, make sure that you add their email address to their contact card. Because this system is a, it works all together, right? So if you don't put their email in, then when you start the DocuSign transaction, it doesn't have an email to send them, to send the request for signatures, okay? So you want to enter your contact. You're going to nurture them. Yes, I want to buy, but not right now. So I'm going to keep talking to them until they say, okay, I'm ready. Now the contact decided to sell or buy a home. So then you're going to create the opportunity. We, we saw the two ways from their contact or from your pipeline, right? Because we can also create opportunities directly from this view, our handshake view. Close that up. Okay. So from right here, create opportunity. You're going to get that same pop up window that we saw when we did it from the contact, okay? We talked about team, contact being on the correct side of command. Now, what's the opportunity type? I'm gonna say buyer, okay? Who is the client? I'm gonna say it's Dakota, done, okay? Now, Co-buyer. Remember yesterday when we added contacts, I showed you guys how to connect the contacts together. If they're connected, the co-buyer is going to be recommended to you, right? North Carolina, one to buy, two to sell, right? So you need to know who's on the stuff, who's not. But if they're both buyers, then you want to add the second person, okay? 
by default, the opportunity name is going to be client number one dash whatever type of transaction it is. That is all good and well for a buyer for it to be Dakota Perry dash buyer. But if you already know that Dakota Perry dash buyer is buying 123 Main Street, go ahead and put 123 Main Street in there. Your MCA will love you for it. Okay. It makes it a lot easier for them to find, right? What if your client's name is John Smith and we have three agents working with John Smith? Then they don't know who, you know, it's harder when they get that check and they're trying to get you paid. If you add the street address in there, it makes it a lot easier. Okay. If it's your listing, always put the street address in there. You know what the address is. Okay. Make sense? So here is our path. So we've got our contact in. They decided to buy or sell a home. We are creating an opportunity. That's where we're at right now. I'm going to follow right along. Okay. Let me close this. There we go. So we're creating that opportunity. I'm just going to use Dakota for time today. We're going to come down here. We have the ability to create custom tags. You can make your tags whatever you want them to be. I like for mine to be, okay, this was a referral. You know, maybe it's going to be, we'll go with something luxury today just because it's fun. It's a luxury. And um, maybe they are move up. Right, they're selling their old house and buying a new one. And that's all I've got for right now. So I, they got referred to me. They're buying a luxury property, which in Winston-Salem means it costs $700,000 or more. Hey, we've got to dream big, right? And they're moving up. They're selling their current home and they're moving into something bigger, okay? So those are just examples of tags that I use. You don't have to use tags. Estimated closing date. This is an example of if you put junk in, you get junk out. I said it to you yesterday, right? The more information that you give a system, the more information it can give you back, okay? So maybe I know that they want to be in by September 30th. That is their goal because they wanna be in there for the holidays. They don't wanna be worrying about it anymore, okay? So their goal, is the estimated closing date of September 30th, okay? Budget is one number, it's max budget, right? It could be, it's not a range, it's not they're looking to buy 700 to 750, it's just 750, cool? Commission rate, your side of the commission, okay? Minus 3%, Time frame. This is where that cultivate comes in, right? You can create these opportunities. If somebody says, yeah, I do want to buy, but it's going to be six months, you can go ahead and create the opportunity because under my checklist, under cultivate, there are things that you could be doing during that six months to stay in touch with them so that you make sure you are the one that helps them buy that house in six months. Does that make sense? So you can create it whenever you're ready. So opportunity phase and stage. Are they in cultivate? Are you already having an appointment? Are they an active client? That's the furthest you can take them when you're creating. So I'm going to say that we're having an appointment and we've already scheduled our appointment for our buyer consult. Okay. And I'm going to click create. Pro tip, don't leave your all of your stuff in cultivate. If you actually start transacting, move them. Okay. So this is going to bring you to the actual opportunity. We created it and now you're inside of a specific opportunity. Okay, so let's go back and look at it, right? So I should be in buyer appointment because that's where I just created this. So we're on the timeline. I'm going to open that up and here it is, Dakota Perry, buyer, 123 Main Street. There's that card. I have a few ways I can move it. Maybe we had our appointment this morning. So now I can pick up this card and move it over to kept. And I can do everything I need to do for a kept appointment. Or maybe we signed everything this morning. I can actually pick this up and move it to active. And now it's moved it over to active, okay? I can move them around that way. 
And so I'm going to leave them in active searching right now. I'm going to go back to my pipeline. All this stuff down here, volume, average time spent in this phase and stage. All of that stuff is because I'm putting good quality information in, which takes me over here to the right where it shows me this is how much potential income is hanging out in my pipeline. If everything in my pipeline closed for 100%, that is how much money I would make. More than likely, I'm going to make this much money because when it's just hanging out and cultivate, it's only got about a 5% chance of closing and we don't know what's going to happen with that yet. When it moves to appointment, it goes up to 10. When it moves into active, it goes up to 50 because not every listing sells right? When it goes under contract, it goes up again, okay? So those are set for you already. I just say leave them at default. If you know your business really well, you can adjust those percentage chances of closing if you want to, but I think that they're fine the way that they are, okay? But this gives you a good insight into your business, and if you're like, oh crap, I can't live off of that, then you better start filling up this pipeline and start doing some lead generating, right? There's nothing more important than closing people to an appointment so that you can get yourself some money and help their family realize their real estate dreams. So this gives you insight into that. But in order to gain that insight, you've got to feed the system. So let's go back into Dakota's opportunity right here, okay? He's active, he's searching. We don't have a co-buyer. Look at all this info I can add. So I'm gonna come up and click this little pencil. A lot of people say they can't find them. They are kind of small, but they're at the upper right corner of each of these boxes. So now I can come in here. This is another way that you can change your opportunity phase and stage is with the drop downs. okay? I know that he's about a month out. We scheduled our appointment yesterday. We had it today, this morning, and today he signed a buyer agency agreement with me, so we know we're going to start looking, and maybe we break our contract tomorrow, and our goal is to close when? September 30th, right? The more stuff that I put here, the more is going to flow into DocuSign or Dotly, if my Greensboro folks are listening. Winston and Chapel Hill, your DocuSign users. Okay, finance type. Was it conventional, FHA, VA, USDA, owner financing, or cash? Okay, I'm gonna say conventional. I'm gonna save it. So now that's a lot more complete picture of what's actually happening, okay? Property, let's go find one. I'm gonna head over to MLS and we're gonna work with something nice today because it's fun. I don't have listings, so I have to go to my office's listing. No shade, Greensboro and Chapel Hill, but my license is hung in Winston-Salem, so that's where we're going to go. I'm going to find something that constitutes luxury, which has got to be up here. Ooh, Buena Vista. Yes, it's Buena Vista if you live in Winston-Salem and not Buena Vista. So, you know, I'm not saying it wrong. <laughs> I'm saying it wrong, but I'm saying it wrong intentionally. Okay. So 1803 Meadowbrook Drive is what we're going with. Miss Abby Umloff, I'm going to borrow your listing. Thank you. Okay. So this is what we're going to make an offer on today. I'm going to copy that. That's what you guys would do. You would find a listing and you would go make the offer. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put the address in. There she is, and I'm gonna save it. Okay, now I want you to see something here in a minute. We're, we'll take a look at it, okay? All right, everybody cool on the details tab? Nothing in the chat, cool. Buyer profile, sneak peek into tomorrow. This means that they are registered on your agent website. That's what registered with consumer platform means. It means they have an account, on my website or my app. That's all this tag means. I'm not going to go into managing the guide today, but we will look at that tomorrow. Documents tab. This is the big one. Let's go back. We entered our contact. We created an opportunity. 
Once we got there, we filled in our details and went to the documents tab. That's where we are now. Okay, documents tab. We always want to come to the left and pick a checklist type. Do not do anything else before you pick a checklist type. Okay, so this person is buying a house. So I'm going to choose residential. This is my checklist. People are always like, where's the checklist for what I need? It's right here. This is it. Okay. So if you have a buyer, when you're in the consultation period, you need to get a working with real estate agents brochure signed. You need to get your buyer agency agreement signed. All of these other documents are samples that you are supposed to give them when you're having a buyer consultation, the questions and answers working with real estate agents, the actual brochure part, okay? You're supposed to give them a sample of an offer to purchase so that they can see what it looks like. You're supposed to give them a sample of the professional services and disclosure election so that they can see it. And you're supposed to give them questions and answers on home inspections. In your exclusive buyer agency agreement, it tells you you're checking it that you gave them those. Okay, so here they are. I gave you a couple extras. If they're buying a house built before 78, obviously lead-based paint. And there's a nice Q&A on due diligence, right? And explains what due diligence is and what happens during due diligence. So you see that these are optional. That's because they're samples. You don't need to turn those into your compliance officers. Okay, they're just samples you're giving your client. These say required because you do need to turn them into your compliance officers. There's a little I you can hover. Please upload the executed working with real estate agents form here over on the right. This is a placeholder for you to, to actually turn it in, okay? Now, what I have done for all three of my market centers, if this document is underlined, you can come in here and click it and you can print one off if you just need to print one on the go, okay? If you're not getting it DocuSigned, if you're like, I'm just gonna take it with me to show this house, you can click on it if it is underlined and print it out, okay? That's what the underlined thing means, print buttons right there, okay? But if you wanna get them signed in DocuSign, the reason we pick a checklist type first, see all these things that say DS next to them? And I'm, I'm gonna show DocuSign in the second half of class because I do have some agents that don't use it so that they can leave. But if it says DS next to it, it is going to automatically show up in your DocuSign when you open it. I'm gonna show you guys that in the second half of class, okay? But that's why it's important to pick your checklist type first. So let's go to under contract. In your um, under contract, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's Just okay. Question, this might be for later this afternoon. That's too, okay. But, um, so when they sign it in DocuSign, will it automatically pull it back and drop it there? Or do you're going to be able to see right now it says we're attaching files from my computer because I didn't connect to DocuSign yet. Yeah. This would be me uploading it from my computer. Once yeah. I start DocuSign, it's going to be connected. So if it gets okay. signed, I can just pull it in. Cool. All right. Thank right. you. Great question. All right, cool. So under contract, you're going to need to upload the MLS sheet. Okay. So that's why I want to go over this because it doesn't matter what market center you're with. Almost every market center asks you to upload the MLS sheet. So we're in the MLS. This is the listing, right? This is the listing. Okay. We're going to come down here to the bottom and click print. In Winston-Salem, and I'm sure most other, remember my license is in Winston-Salem, so I'm speaking from Stephen Long's mouth, you want the agent full version of the MLS sheet. So I've highlighted the agent full version of the MLS sheet, okay? And I'm going to click print to PDF. That is just saving it as a document, right? Now I can click download, and I'm gonna say this is 1803. Meadowbrook 1803, Meadowbrook MLS active, okay? 
and I'm going to make a folder on my desktop for July 2022 boot camp. So I know what this is. And I'm going to save that in Maleshi. Okay. And I'm going to need my client to sign these disclosures when I make this offer, right? The little blue papers right there, that's all of our addenda that come with the listing. So I'm gonna click them. There's my mineral oil and gas rights, my lead-based paint, my residential property disclosure. So I need these two because I'm gonna have to get them signed. So I'm gonna download them. I'm gonna put them in my little folder like so. And I'm gonna go away, get rid of that, go back one. Now I need my lead base paint. I'm gonna save it. And now I'm gonna go back one more time and grab that residential property disclosure and save it. Because my clients need to review these and they need to sign these when I sign my offer, okay? Questions on that? Check in the chat. Nothing in the chat. Cool. All right. So I've got that stuff handled. Okay. Let's look back here. I'm supposed to upload this MLS sheet so I can browse from my computer and I can go to my desktop and my July boot camp. There's my active MLS sheet. Now I have it there. I wanted to make sure to add a document so you guys can see this. Now this button lit up that says submit to market center. Okay. So the way that it rolls and the way you should be doing this, once I've had my buyer consultation, I got my working with real estate agent signed. I got my exclusive buyer agency agreement signed. I gave them the samples that I said I was going to give them. I've added the documents, whether you got them signed in ink, whether you got them signed in DocuSign, whether you got them signed in dot loop, or you got them signed on a scribe. I don't care where you got them signed. Put the finished copy next to where it belongs, right? And then once you have everything in that folder that's required, you're going to submit it to the market center, okay? It's going to get kicked back to you if it's wrong. Okay, bear with me for one second. I'm going to come off screen. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay. Bear with me one second. Good grief, where is it? Hold on. Always hard because it's a month in between. And I try not to bother our compliance officers. Hold on. Let me pause my share so I can move this on my big screen. Y'all just bear with me for one sec. My screen was so tiny. Man, compliance. I usually have this pulled up. I apologize. Mm 
Y'all, I am just, I'm on the struggle bus apparently. Hold on. I thought it was always called the Command Compliance app. Hold on, I'm trying to find it for you because I want you to see what it looks like. There, goodness gracious. Okay, let me reshare. Sorry, I was like, good grief, it won't pull up. Okay, so here's what happens. Hello, your compliance request for this listing has been returned by your office. Please review, update, and resubmit once the changes have been made, okay? So you're gonna get an email that says that it was returned, okay? You're going to get a notification up here that says it was returned, and you're going to get a notification in your command app that says it was returned. So you're gonna get notified three different ways, okay? That it, that it happened. And what your job is, maybe you turned in the wrong version of this. Okay, I'm gonna submit it. Amanda's gonna kill me. <laughs> Sorry, Amanda, I love you. So say I submitted it, she kicked it back to me and said, that's the wrong version of the MLS sheet. I'm gonna grab this, click update, right? So whatever it is, if I didn't get something signed on my offer, I'm gonna click update. I'm gonna say I'm resubmitting because I uploaded the wrong version. I'm gonna change out the document and then I'm gonna update it and then I'm gonna resubmit it to the market center, okay? Does that make sense? So I'm just gonna grab whatever else file and click update. And now I changed it and then I will be able to resubmit it to the market center, okay? So it's gonna be, this says updated now, it's gonna say returned, approved, whatever. Your goal is for your consultation folder to be completely approved then you never have to go back into it again, right? Because it's your buyer. doesn't matter if they made an offer on five different houses. Your buyer agency and you're working with real estate agents didn't change. They're approved. They're out of your way. So now you're only working in your under contract folder. Then once this gets completed, you've got it turned in. It's out of the way. Per North Carolina Real Estate Commission guidelines, you have 72 hours to turn in your documents to your broker in charge, 72 hours, okay? That's not our rule, that's not a KW rule, that is North Carolina Real Estate Commission rule, okay? Just so you know. All right, so these are all the documents that you could need to turn in. So just make sure that you're familiarizing yourself. Each market center's checklist are a little bit different, right? This happens to be Winston-Salem's. So it tells you this is conditional, the MLS sheet, because not all listings go in the MLS. So it tells you that with the little I. The offer, obviously it's required. There's no exceptions. Page 16 needs to get uploaded. That's showing the receipt of money. There's a second spot for page 16 because sometimes they get separated. This one went to the attorney, this one went to the seller to sign for due diligence, right? So you got ended up with two sheets with separate signatures. So it's just a second placeholder for you in case that happened, right? Your residential owner disclosure, it needs to be turned in. Mineral oil and gas rights, it needs to be turned in. In both, in all three of my market centers, we have some affiliated business disclosures your specific market centers will be located in your specific office, right? And then all these things that are conditional, if you use a 4T agreement to amend a contract, say you made the offer for 850 and then you got the home inspection done and then the seller agreed to lower it to 825 because of the repairs. That requires a 4T agreement to amend the contract. If you use it, you need to turn it in. If you didn't use it, you don't need to turn it in. Does that make sense? So all of them have notes that tell you what it is. Again, if it is underlined, you can click it and you can download it and print it, or you can go get it from DocuSign or DotLoop, which we're gonna look at in the second half of the class. Good? Make sense? And we're just gonna keep working our way until we get to closing, okay? So then you're going to need to upload that closing disclosure, your professional services election and disclosure, 
Um, if there was a referral on it, you need to turn that in. So it tells you if there was a referral on it, make sure that you turn it in. Does that make sense? Pretty good? All right. So again, we're going to skip start a transaction. That would open up DocuSign. We add our documents and submit within 72 hours of getting them signed. And then we're going to move forward to creating. And I want to show you guys this before we go into DocuSign. But does everybody kind of get, get the point following a path? Okay. Now, say we turned everything in. We know that this is going to close or we're pretty confident it's going to close. The next thing we have to do is go to the offers and commissions tab, okay? So documents is how we get our compliance checked, our paperwork, offers and commissions is how we request to get paid, okay? So we're going to create an offer and accept the offer regardless of if this is a buyer opportunity or a listing opportunity. So let's look at what that looks like, okay? So we're going to add a new offer. How much was this house? 825. So we're going to say this was accepted offer on 1803 Meadowbrook Drive. Okay. I'm going to create the offer. So I'm going to, since this is my buyer, right? I can go ahead and select the listing from the Keller Williams listing system. So I don't have to enter all that data. Right now it's showing only my listings. I need to switch it because it's not my listing I'm, that my buyer is making an offer on. I can search for the property. There it is. Abby is the listing agent. I know that that's correct. I'm going to click select. Okay. So my closing date was what? August. No, September 30th, my address is in there. My offer details are complete. Any questions on this tab? It's usually easiest to select it from the KWLS instead of making yourself write it, okay? I'm gonna go forward with parties. So it knows that my client was Dakota. This is his email, this is his phone number. It knows that I was the buying agent and it knows that Abby was the listing agent because I used the Keller Williams listing system to connect that listing. What it doesn't know is her seller, which is Driscoll. I wonder if that's my kid's dentist actually, because that's his last name. All right, so we know that that's who it is. So now the people are done, right? I can go forward. Now, Here's my terms, okay? So I'm gonna say, um, the most important thing is that your sales price is correct. You can't type in here, right? I'm trying to type, it won't let me. I could put all of the money under cash if it was a cash deal, or I could put all of the money under financing if it was a finance deal. Or if you're super detail oriented and you're like, well, I know that they did $300,000 in cash and I know that they did $425,000 in financing. Then you still have the right number at the end, right? So whatever it is, whichever way it works for you, right? This is for your records. You can be as detailed or as not detailed as you want, as long as you have the total sales price. Questions on that? Good. I'm gonna say that they did 10,000 in earnest money. Option fee means due diligence fee. Same thing, it's just called option fee in some states and due diligence fee in some states. Termination option means due diligence period. So maybe we gave ourselves 20 days for that. And the seller will contribute this much to a residential service contract. That means that the seller is going to give you $700,000 or $700,000, $700 for a home warranty, right? That's what a residential service contract would be. An example, a termite bond, whatever. Seller will contribute this much to closing costs. Y'all have not seen that in this market, but that used to actually be a thing. We got sellers to give us money for closing, right? So when that comes back, 
you'll be able to put that stuff down there. Okay, let me move forward to agent analysis. You can do this or not do this. You can put the pros and the cons in of the offer and a summary of the offer. When this does come into play to be very helpful is if it's your listing and you have three offers, right? You can add each offer. It makes you a beautiful spreadsheet that shows all the differences. You're like, this one's cash, but it closes fast. And you guys would have to move and maybe get a temporary rental. This one's full price, but it's FHA. So there's a chance that you might have to do some repairs, right? So that's when this would really come into play. We can just skip it for our buyer and click save. Okay, so now we have our offer. Does that make sense? Pretty good. Any questions? We're going to click accept on the offer, right? We're following along. We created our offer. We've accepted our offer. Our commissions are now available. We can click manage, okay? This is going to show you what was the sales price? What was your commission? When's it going to close? How much is your commission going to be? What's it going to do to your cap when it closes, right? What's your gross? What gets paid to the office? What gets paid directly to you? It's going to show you the whole breakdown here, okay? If at this point you have questions, this would be questions for your market center administrator. Winston-Salem, that's Carissa, K-L-R-W-994 at kw.com, okay? Greensboro, you've got Donna and Becca. Again, theirs is K-L-R-W-509 at kw.com. And Chapel Hill, you guys are between MCAs, but we do have a temporary MCA in place. We're using the same email, klrw685 at kw.com. So if you have questions about your commissions, those are for your MCA, okay? But pending that this all looks correct to you, you can just click submit, okay? When you do, you're gonna get this pop-up window that says, do you wanna to donate to KW Cares? Do you want to donate to KW Kids Can? right? If you're just getting started, maybe you're like, I'm not ready to do this right now, okay? Then you don't have to. You can say click, skip donation and submit without donating, okay? Or you could pick other and make it one dollar and say every time I have a closing, I'll give one dollar. That's fine. Or you could even put zero in here, right? If you're just not ready, you can put zero and you can click apply this same donation to all of my future commissions. And then you won't have to see this pop-up window anymore. It just knows not to do donations. But then maybe in a year you start doing better and you're like, I'm ready to start giving five bucks. You can go into settings and change this, okay? Totally up to you, but I like to give you guys tips. But if you do click apply the same donation to all future commissions, then you won't um, go ahead and click donate and submit because we put zero, right? And it, it, you won't see this pop up anymore. Anybody have questions on that? Check in the chat. Cool. So those are the things that you have to do to get paid. You have to submit your paperwork. It all has to get approved. You have to submit your commission. If you don't do either one of those things and then you go to turn in your check and you're like, give me my money. They're gonna be like, no. <laughs> You have to turn in all your paperwork. You haven't turned in your commission tab, right? So just know that you have to do it. Print out this document. If you have questions, that's okay. Come and ask us, right? Come and ask us if you have questions. Compliance questions, that's paperwork. I'm gonna show you a little trick. When you're in your consultation, if you're like, oh goodness, okay, I've never done this before. I think I have this done right. Look at this nice little button right here. It says add a comment. You can use this at symbol and your whole leadership team shows up right here. And you can say, Stephen, I don't know if this document's right, help. And Stephen can look at it and say, no, you're good. Go ahead and submit it. 
You can at symbol Carissa about a document. You can at symbol, I'm not showing up obviously because I'm in my account and I'm not gonna show up, but you can at symbol me if you need to, right? So Michael Sargent is an MCA out of Washington, DC that is assisting us right now with some stuff. So you can even at symbol Michael. Amanda checks your paperwork. So if it's like, did I check the right boxes? In Winston-Salem, it's Amanda. In Chapel Hill, it's Amanda. In Greensboro, it's more than likely um, Becca or Donna, okay? So you can at symbol, at symbol people and ask questions with this add a comment button, but each one of these has its own conversation. Because like I said, once you've turned in your consultation documents, hopefully you don't have to go back in there, right? It's done, it's out of the way. So then your under contract area gets a new comment box. Does that make sense? And you'll get notifications up here when somebody talks back to you, back and forth with you. Cool? So just make sure that you're getting those things done because we want you to get paid as quickly as possible. We really do. but we have to have the stuff. And as a person who used to check compliance for a short period of time, it's not fun, okay? It's not a fun thing to have to do. So have a little grace. They're trying to keep you from getting in trouble, right? You don't wanna get a brown envelope from the real estate commission. I promise you that costs a lot of money. They're watching your back when they're returning documents to you so that you don't get yourself in any trouble. Cool? All right. Good deal. So I'm gonna show you a couple more things in here. We're gonna take a break and then we're gonna come back for the folks that want to see DocuSign and look at DocuSign, okay? Um, you can export documents from here. So say you have like a terabyte, can you even see that? Yeah, um, that's just a big thing that holds data, right? I've got photos on there, videos on there, paperwork on there. It's just an external hard drive, right? So if you're like, I used to keep a paper copy and a Google Drive copy and this copy because we have to keep all this stuff for three to seven years, right? I haven't sold a house since 2015 and I just threw out the last of my documents and shredded them, right? You gotta keep it for a long time. I like keeping things in triplicate. It's just how I roll. You do have the ability to export all of your documents. I click export documents. I can put a password on them, right? I can set credentials there. I can export all of the documents. I can send them directly to a client, type their email in. I could send them to a closing attorney. I could send them to whoever I needed to straight from the system. So that's one thing I wanted to show you guys. I do like that. You can also, Abby was good. Her documents were all split. Right, you can see in your opportunity, your documents are split. The residential owner property disclosure is by itself. Mineral oil and gas rights is by itself. Lead-based paint is by itself. A lot of times when agents upload their disclosures here, it's just one file and they're all smushed together, right? Because they got them all signed in ink, they scan them as one document. So you do have the ability straight from here to split documents if you need to. So you can go to these three dots right here and you can go to split and attach. You can browse your computer for them wherever you scan them. If you did scan them or if you downloaded them, whatever. Let me check. I think I have one from last month if I'm not mistaken. Thought I did. I'll just grab this thing, right? So say this was that disclosure, but it was all three of the disclosures mushed together. Then I can go to next and I can say, okay, thanks person that didn't split the documents up, but I know that the residential property disclosure is page one through four and it's the RPD, also known as the RPODs now. I always called it the RPD, okay? I can attach more pages. And I know that the mineral oil and gas rights is one page and it was page five in this, and that's the MOG. And now I can attach again. 
And I know that this is the lead based paint, which I must have passed. There it is. And I know that it was page six through seven, and it was the lead based paint. I can split and attach, and it's going to split them all up. It's going to take it a second or refresh just so you guys can see how it works. We'll wait. Thanks, computer. There. So see, they're all uploaded into their spots and they're broken out into their appropriate little things. Okay. So you have that splitting capability, which is really nice. And then the last thing that I want to show you guys before I let the non DocuSign users go is the versions of checklists, because I hear it all the time. I have a buyer. We made an offer on 123 Main Street. We went under contract. We went to home inspection. They were like, oh, don't want to do that. And so they walked away. So now we're going to make an offer on 567 Maple. Do I need to go create a new opportunity? No, you do not. It's still the same opportunity. It's still the same buyer. You've still turned in your working with real estate agents and your buyer agency agreement. They're signed. You're good. They're still your buyer. It's still the same opportunity for you to make money, right? What changed is which house they're buying, okay? So even if you had turned in all of these documents already, that's okay. You're going to come in here. You're going to click here, right? See that little down arrow? You're going to click add version. And you're going to say new offer on 567 Maple, okay? And create new version. And now you have a new clean version of your checklist. So all of your new documents are going to get turned in, but you've maintained all of your old documents because you have to, right? You have to keep them, even if they didn't end up buying that house because you got them signed and they were documents and you're a broker and you're a realtor and you have all this responsibility. You got to keep them. And you did. They're still here. Okay. But now you get to work in your new clean contract folder and upload all your new documents. So no, you do not have to create a new opportunity. Same thing if it's your listing, you get an offer, it goes under contract, you start turning stuff in and then the people walk, then you go back to active, then they bring, you get a new offer, you just create a new version. You don't have to return in all your listing paperwork, you just create a new version of the under contract folder. Does that make sense? I have a question, Monica. Go ahead, Allison. So um, if you have a buyer that does like a lot of investing, mm -hmm. like instead yeah. they're, they're constantly putting in offers mm -hmm. and purchasing. Um, so that would be the same way we could go about that. Just no. Or do you have to do that? For totally? them, every time that they buy a property, that is a new opportunity. Okay. It's a separate transaction. Okay. Gotcha. This instance is not a separate transaction. It's just okay. one of them fell through. Right. Gotcha. So yeah. like if you're looking at Dakota, um, because he's my little test. He has like 36 opportunities. Uh-huh. And that's what your that's what your contra um your investor would look like, right? Okay. So if I go into Dakota, good grief. I'm gonna reset my internet on break, I think, because it's driving me crazy. Driving me crazy. So see, he has 27 opportunities. Mm -hmm. So then you would just have that list of opportunities for your investor. These are all okay. the transactions I did with them. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. All right, guys, does anybody have any questions? Follow your path to get paid. It is your friend. It keeps you on track. If you follow these steps, your life will be much easier, I promise you. Dot loop or DocuSign. Either way, it's still going to make your life easier. Do not go straight to DocuSign. Do not go straight to dot loop. Start it in command. Okay. So any questions before we take a quick break? Okay. If you're not going to look at DocuSign, you are welcome to stay and listen. You're welcome to leave. Um, I'm going to turn on music. We're going to take a five minute break until 1120. We're going to come back and go through DocuSign. I'll see you guys in just a minute.
All right. Now, for those of us that are going to be using DocuSign, we're going to still look at this path to get paid. Same steps. Enter the contact, create the opportunity, documents tab. Even if you're using dot loop, you're going to click start a transaction. That's our next step. So we're going to go back to our most recent opportunity we were working on. Right. We've added our contact. We've created our opportunity. We've got all our data. We went to documents. We picked a checklist type and we got it. Now we're going to click start a transaction. Okay. We're going with DocuSign. If you don't use one or the other, you can go ahead and get rid of it. If you have questions, just ask. You should get a pop up window that takes you into DocuSign. If you don't, it's more than likely because you have a pop up blocker enabled. So if it didn't pop up, you should see a little X up here. We're going to click continue. We're going to sign into DocuSign. Okay. And now look, Dakota Perry Buyer, 123 Main Street. Dakota Perry Buyer, 123 Main Street. They are connected together, okay? All of this stuff that had a TLDS next to it is in the DocuSign room. They're already there for you. You don't have to go find them. They're already here, okay? This is a buyer, remember? So the one thing that wasn't here, I'm sorry, if it was a listing, the one thing that I didn't make automatically populate is the lead based paint because not every listing is going to need the lead based paint, right? So you can always come up and add documents by clicking the blue add button and pick DocuSign. Mine's going to look a little bit different than yours because I'm in three offices. But if you were in Winston Salem under groups, you're going to see. FISBO, KWRE buyer forms, KWRE listing forms, KWRE vacant land forms. If you're in Greensboro, you're going to see listing packet residential and buyer packet residential. That's how your market center broke it down for you. And if you were in Chapel Hill, you're going to see buyer new construction resale. You're going to see the uh, all the other ones, right? It's just that I'm in all three. So all three are showing up. And then over here on libraries, okay, if you're in Winston-Salem, you're going to see, in Greensboro, you're going to see Triad MLS and NCAR, and then whichever one of your market centers it is, okay? If you're in Chapel Hill, you're going to see the Triangle MLS folder, the North Carolina Real Estate Commission, and 685 folder, okay? So those are the ones you're going to have. NCAR means all. It's all NCAR documents. Nice long list of forms. So if you're looking for something specific like lead based paint, then you can search for lead based paint. And there, there it will be. Okay. So that's how you can go get forms. These little groups over here are just pared down groupings of forms to make it a little bit easier so you don't have to navigate through that entire giant list of forms. That's all they are, okay? I teach a class on how to set up DocuSign templates. It's on my YouTube channel. I will be teaching it again. If you are in Chapel Hill or if you are in Winston-Salem tomorrow for Carolina Educational Services at 1 p.m., I will be teaching DocuSign tips, tricks, and time savers. Your offices both have subscriptions, but you do have to go and register for that class. Okay, so you need to go to carolinaeducationservices.com and go to their digital subscription platform. And you will see that class for you to register. It should be showing up on the front, actually. Tech Tuesday is this afternoon. And then down here, I think, somewhere. I'm missing it, but it's on there. Um, it's called DocuSign Tips, Tricks, and Time Savers. You can register and not come, and you will get emailed the video, even if you don't come. Okay? So just throwing that out there. Right? 
So saying you did set up your templates already, you would be able to right click the form, apply your form template, pick your template and click apply and it would fill your stuff in for you. I don't have time to show you guys how to do templates today, but if you do have them, right click again, apply form template, pick the form template, click apply, it'll fill in whatever was on your form template for you into the form, okay? Some stuff is coming over from command. So if I go to details, I'm working with a buyer. I'm not a listing agent, but my buyer is Dakota. There's his email that came from command. It knows I'm the buyer agent and my details came from command, okay? If it was my listing, obviously it would be the other way around. It would have, have seller one, it would have me as a listing agent, okay? So check your details tab. Now, the other thing that I wanna bring to your attention now that I've connected, it says the last DocuSign sync was July 26, 2022. All fields are synced with DocuSign. This is in command, okay? So again, if you went under contract, you came out of contract, whatever, made an offer, need to make a new offer, you could come in here and change the address. I'm just gonna change it to something else. Okay, and save it. Now, there are two fields that need to be synced. So I can sync the transaction and click update. That's going to update my DocuSign to the new address. So then I can go in and fill out the offer for the new property in DocuSign. Does that make sense? So everything's kind of working together, okay? So any questions on that so far? Everybody good? Yeah, I just wish I would have known that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I only like no. figured it out, but that would have made it a lot easier. <laughs> uh, all right, good deal. Well, there we go. And we'll talk about that kind of stuff tomorrow in class two. All the syncing and templates and a lot of other stuff that people didn't know you could do with DocuSign. Okay? But. Now we need to get our stuff signed. So we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to go with our working with real estate and exclusive buyer agency just to make it shorter, right? Um, I actually might pull in one of those disclosures so that you can see it. So this working with real estate agents is just the brochure. That's not for them to actually sign, right? This one is. So I'm going to open it up by clicking on the document. We need to check and fill in anything that's necessary. So in my office, right, this is a broker in charge thing. These are the things that could happen with a transaction for a buyer in my winston Salem Market Center. We could do buyer agency and hopefully I am, right? I could also fall under dual agency because if I show you a listing that's listed by someone in my office, we are now in dual agency. If, you, if it was my listing and you were like, hold up now, I don't wanna work with you because you're representing the listing agent, my broker in charge could designate an agent to work with you, so that could happen. And if it was my buyer, I could be working as a seller sub agent with an unrepresented buyer if they wanna make an offer, but they don't wanna sign a buyer agency with me. All of those things could happen. So all of those things need to be checked, okay? The buyer signature comes at a different point in time in this process. My information is already filled in. That came from where I applied a template that already had my name and my license number and my brokerage name. Okay. So it's all filled in. So I'm going to save this and close it. Okay. Now, I also am going to go ahead and get my exclusive buyer agency signed today. We had our consultation, they're good to go, they wanna work with me. Okay, it filled in Dakota's name, it filled in my brokerage name, I need to fill in the date because I don't have dates on my templates because I don't know when I'm gonna be signing the document, so I gotta fill that in. Everybody misses this box, y'all. Don't forget that box. But my template knew that I had already checked residential, that I'm usually only representing one buyer, I had filled all that in. I need to go through and fill out everything that needs to be filled out, right? 
So some of it came in from my template, some of it I would need to type in. Buyer acknowledges the sample as the offer to purchase and contract. That's why those samples are there. Buyer acknowledges the sample of a professional services disclosure and election form, right? So that's why I have those samples there. Not doing home warranty. You guys get the point. You're going to go through. You're going to start making decisions, right? Does the buyer authorize me to represent both the buyer and the seller in the transaction? The same individual agent. If they said no, then if I wanted to show them my listing, I would have to have some, my broker in charge designate another agent to work with them. Okay? So this is new this year. This is an update to that buyer agency agreement. So make sure you know the answer. You should have talked about that in your buyer consultation. Okay? You go through, fill this out, fill this out. You get the point. My template filled all this stuff in for me. Good to go. Save and close. You guys get the point. Under the documents tab, we're filling in all of our text. We're checking any check boxes that belong to us as the agent. Especially on listings, there are some check boxes that don't belong to us. They are for the seller to fill out. You won't be able to click them under this documents tab in DocuSign because they're not ours to click, right? So if you're ever in like a mineral oil and gas rights, those are supposed to be clicked by the seller, not you, okay? So they're not clickable by you. Does that make sense? So documents tab, we handle text. We handle check boxes that belong to us as the agent. That's all we do in here. Once we're completed it, once we have completed that, okay? Then we're going to click the check boxes on what we're getting signed. All right. I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm going to give them these samples. If I had met with them in person, maybe I gave them paper samples, then I wouldn't need to send them the samples. Right. But if I'm doing everything digitally, maybe I'm going to go ahead and send them these samples and a Q&A on home inspections. Um, and this working with real estate agents brochure because I didn't get to give it to them in person, right? So anything that I need to send them, I'm going to click the checkbox on. Everybody good with that? Now I have this little toolbar here. Oh, I can't see my chat. Are all the, no, Gabby, that is a great question. Just this year, North Carolina Association of Realtors did release some Spanish translation forms, okay? And for those of you that don't know, for every one of my market centers, hold on, I'm gonna take this off screen because there could be something that we don't want seen. I'm gonna go into this one. Bear with me one sec. In all of y'all's, um, private Facebook pages, I uploaded, let me just pull up that specific. Post, well, this is the one from last year, but the same thing. Um, every year I go in and I make a Google Drive folder with all of the documents. So I go to the North Carolina Association of Realtors website so that you guys don't have to. You can though, because you're realtors. So you can go there yourself, right? You can always go to in North Carolina, it's ncrealtors.com. You can always go here yourself because you are a realtor. You can sign in to NC Realtors. You can go in there and get all the forms. I'll show you what it looks like so that you can be thankful that you didn't have to go in and sign them all. It'll log me in, just thinking about it. Everything's being so slow today, dang. Come on. Um, so when you're here, and if you haven't gone to NC Realtors, y'all go there. You pay $500 a year to be a realtor. Go here and see what they've got for you, right? Um, 
but you click the pin in this and it takes you to forms and contracts. They're broken down into 100, 200 through 800 series joint forms. Here's those Spanish translation forms, Gabby. Right, so they have a couple in each series, but not all yet. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. But yeah, I, so I've gone in here already and I've downloaded all these forms and I've given you a Google Drive link in your Facebook groups. I had to get permission from your brokers in charge to do that. So don't share that link, please. But it gives you the ability to have them saved to your computer to make it a little bit quicker. Great question. Okay, everybody good? Checking what we're sending. We're going to click the pin. This is going to take us into our envelopes tab. It's creating an envelope, which is where we get signatures. Okay. It takes it a minute to load. Come on, any day now, here we go. I guess my computer needs a vacation. I do too. <laughs> I am going on vacation, by the way, just so you guys know. Don't freak out. I've got Market Center Tech Trainers in my place. All that stuff's going to get posted. You have their phone numbers, their email addresses, so you'll be able to get in touch with somebody. You'll be able to get in touch with me, but I don't know how uh, beneficial I'll be laying on a beach in Tybee Island, Georgia, enjoying adult beverages. Um, but I always rename my envelopes because if you don't, then they're all going to say, please DocuSign, and you're not going to know what's in anything, and then you're going to be like, what's happening, right? So I'm going to say that this is my working with real estate agents and my buyer agency agreement and samples. That way I know what it is, okay? One thing that a lot of people don't know is that you can reorder these forms, okay? So I don't want them all out of order like this. I want this to get signed first, then this, my buyer agency, then they can have this brochure, this sample, this sample, and this Q&A on home inspections to review. They're not actually signing those. So now, this is the most important part. So if you were taking notes, or if you are dazed, because, you know, I know it's a lot, start paying attention. When you add recipients to your envelope, choose pre-tagged roles. Do not choose room participants. Do not choose email address. If you're using the forms that say form, which means they are a DocuSign form, they are mapped for signatures. So you want to use pre-tagged roles and you're gonna get this pop-up and you're gonna say, who is buyer one? Buyer one is Dakota James Perry. Who is the buyer's agent? buyer's agent is me, right? I don't have a buyer entity. I don't have a second buyer on this transaction. These are the only people that are signing and this is who they are, right? When I do this, it's gonna drop all of my signatures, initials, dates, everything for that client to sign is gonna be put into the documents. If I had used email or room participant, I, Monica Perry would get to drag and drop all of those initials and dates and signatures. And I don't want to do that. It takes forever. And that used to be the way that we had to do it back in the day, right? We had to drag and drop every single thing over there and it was not fun. And I don't want you guys to have to go through it, okay? I've had people call me extremely upset. Why do I have to drag and drop all these things? You don't. You need to use pre-tagged roles. So asterisks highlighters, whatever you need to do. Okay, now it knows he's buyer one, I'm the buyer's agent, these are the two people signing. Cool. I'm going to type him a nice happy email at the bottom. I'm so excited to make this offer for you, right? I'm going to click next. It is dropping all those things for me. 
Boom. Dakota is blue. I am yellow. This is the working with real estate agents preview pane. There's only a blue tag there because he's the only one that signs it. I don't sign this form. But if I expand this preview, there's two tags because I do sign this form, right? So his signature is there, his date is there, okay? Initial, initial, because we both sign. Initial, 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 initial. I want you to pay attention to this page right here, page five of seven. Do you see the difference in these initials from these? They're hollow, they're not a solid color. That is because they are not required initials. And I don't know why this looks a little like that there. There, okay, see the difference there? So if I click this initial look on the right, it's checked that it's required. These are optional because they're choices, right? Are you letting me do dual agency? Well, hopefully we've already had that conversation and we know the answer, right? What happens with this, with these optional initials is either they don't see them at all, so they don't sign it at all. They don't know what it means. They do see it. They don't know what it means, so they sign all of them, which is wrong, right? Or they just sign the wrong one. They're like, well, heck yeah, I want exclusive representation, but they don't know that that means then you can't show them any of our listings and we list more property in the triad than anyone else. So that could be a problem, but they don't know what they don't know. So instead of leaving it up to them to figure it out, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to click preview. If you didn't know, you could do this with DocuSign. You can hit preview. So you can see what it's going to look like when your buyer gets this email. Okay. I'm viewing is Dakota. So this would be the client receiving the email. And he's like, okay, I got to sign this. Start. It takes him directly to the required signatures, right? High Ds of the world like me. I ain't reading all this. I'm going to click, 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 click. I'm going to sign it. I'm not going to see any of it. Just being honest. High C's, the super detail-oriented people are going to read every single line, but they still might get confused and sign the wrong one. So watch what happens. He signs, cool. Page one, sign, cool. Page two, sign, cool. Three, cool. Here's that next page. When this is expanded in his email, he's not going to see this initial that says optional right here. He's going to see this and sign it, and it took him right over the top of those. So he's either not going to see them at all, or he's going to be like, I don't know what I'm supposed to sign. And he'll be able to sign all three of them. And that would still be wrong, right? So instead of doing that to yourself, Say, okay, he said dual agency was fine, so he needs to sign this, but he said he doesn't want me to represent him and the seller, so then I would have to have designated dual agency. So since he does not authorize the same individual agent to represent both the buyer and seller, I also need him to sign designated dual agency in case that comes up. But what he doesn't require is exclusive representation so I can delete that altogether. He doesn't need to sign there at all. Does that make sense? So now when he goes to get his email, it's gonna force him to sign the places that you actually want him to sign. So he's gonna click start, he's gonna sign. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm supposed to sign this and this, and then he's gonna to get to keep going. Cool? So make sure that you take that extra minute to do that. There's a couple of spots probably on the offer to purchase like that and the exclusive right to sell listing agreement. There's some spots that are like that in regards to dual agency, okay? But otherwise everything else is filled in for you and it's super simple and you can click send. Now, if you were getting your offer and those disclosures signed, okay, we're gonna pretend like this is one. Since those are not a DocuSign form, you will have to pull over his signatures and date and initials from the left. So those disclosures that we downloaded earlier, 
when you upload them into the system, open, you have to drag and drop the signatures because it was not originate, it didn't originate in DocuSign, right? Or it may have, but it didn't originate in your DocuSign. So you would need to drag all these over. Good grief, this thing. Um, you would need to drag all of the things over, okay, for those. But if it's a DocuSign form, you won't have to do that. It'll fill it in for you with pre-tag rolls. Does that make sense? Anybody have any questions on that? Nothing in the chat. Cool. I'm going to send it off so you guys can see what it would look like. So you're going to need to sign it. And Dakota is going to need, what in the world? That's the wrong email. Hold on one sec, let me get his Gmail open. Okay, so now it says it needs my signature. So I'm going to click. the sign good grief this is so slow I apologize mm -mm -mm. thinking about it I'm starting to get impatient. I don't know. My internet was being weird last night too. All right. So this is what it looks like when you sign it. Okay. I need to sign it. So I'm going to click sign. I'm signing as the agent because I have to sign my buyer agency agreement. I'm going to click continue. I'm going to click start. And then I need to initial. It took me right over the top of that working with real estate agents because I don't sign that. So now my part is done. I'm going to click finish. Okay. And now we're going to pretend like we're the buyer. I'm going to get rid of that. So the buyer got the email that says Monica Perry sent me something to DocuSign. And he sees what it is and blah, blah, blah. And he clicks review documents. And it looks like mine, right? He clicks continue. He does need to sign the working with real estate agents. And then he's going to need to initial all his spots. And then we made these required so he knows exactly where he needs to sign. And then he's finished. Okay. So that's what that would look like. Now, I told you guys, you always need to start in command, right? You've got to start the transaction in command. Oops. Okay. But once you have started in command, you can go directly to realestate.docusign.com. So if you get an email that says everything got signed or whatever, you can go straight to realestate.docusign.com. Just don't start there. But once that connection is created, you're good to go. To just go directly there. And I'll show you guys what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Because he signed everything and you signed everything that needed to get signed today. There will now be two versions of that document in your room. The original one that says form 
and the signed one that's green and says it was signed, right? So if he sees something wrong on this exclusive buyer agency agreement or something he wants you to amend, you can always open up the form version, fix it, get fresh signatures. So I get asked that a lot as well, right? I made an offer or I got something signed. It was wrong. I need to fix it. The easiest, cleanest way, and I like clean documents, and you should too because they're legal documents. Can you do strike throughs? Yes, but I hate them. They look really bad. So just open the original version, fix whatever it is. You saw how quick it was to sign. It's a lot easier to just fix the issue and re-sign it, and it looks a lot nicer than going and adding strike throughs. And it's easier because adding strike throughs is not the easiest thing in the world to add. But now we have our signatures on our documents. So everything should be good. Cool. Now, back in command. Let's look at what happened. Okay. We go here. This is where, Allison, what you were asking me, can you bring them straight from DocuSign? Yes, you can. And guys, I know that today is not the most fun day with the forms and stuff, but I promise the other days are. Tomorrow, we're going to look at websites. We're going to look at designs and campaigns on Thursday. Um, so it's going to be all good and a lot more fun, but this is the necessary evil the paperwork of real estate. That is why we uh, read the millionaire real estate agent, get ourselves to make enough money where we can hire an assistant so that we don't have to do it. Because assistants like paperwork, right? Or most of them do, because that's why they have that job. All right. So back in our documents tab of our same little thing here, we got two things signed. Right, we got this working with real estate agent signed and we got our buyer agency agreement signed. So now we can actually attach our files from DocuSign, not just from our computer, but we do need to select a working folder, okay? Like Room Docs. Now I can go, okay, working with real estate agents disclosure, select 261 working with real estate agents disclosure, says it's signed, that is the correct document. 201 exclusive buyer agency agreement. Click 201 exclusive buyer agency agreement signed. That is the correct document. Boom. They're there. They're good. I've gotten them filled out. I know that they look good. I can now submit them to the market center. And those are the only two documents in your consultation folder for a buyer that are required for you to turn into your market center. The other ones are there, just there for you if you need to print them out, send them over, whatever, right? These are the only two ones that are required. So then you'd be able to submit, right? All right, so we got our way through that. I know it's not the most fun thing. Um, the reason, I guess I'll touch on this with you guys, the reason that you have to pick your working folder See how doubling up these documents could become kind of a pain in the butt because then you end up with a bunch of documents in DocuSign. You can come up to Actions and actually add a folder in DocuSign. And I could say like, these are all my signed documents, right? And click Create. And then I could take all of my documents that are signed so I don't have duplicates and click their little check boxes. And some people it won't bother them, but for super organized people, it might bother them. So all my green ones are checked. I can pick them up and I can drop them up here in my signed documents. And then I can keep that folder closed. So they're there, but I don't have to look at them all the time kind of situation, you know. Um, oh, I just saw that it's doing that stupid thing the other day where it won't let me pull multiple documents at one time. It's very annoying. But anyway, that's why now when I come back here, so I can show you, I need to hit refresh. Oh, 
it makes you pick the working folder because if somebody breaks their DocuSign down into folders, now I have my signed documents folder, right? So that's why that's there. So a lot of people, when it's not selected, they're like, it won't let me click anything. It's because you have to pick the working folder, okay? So there's that. And then the other thing that we have is custom folders. So I wanna to touch on this quickly. If you're not required to turn it in, do not turn it in <laughs> because once the compliance officers see it, they can't unsee it. So if it's wrong, you're going to have to fix it because now they've seen it. Okay. But there might be stuff that you need for yourself as the agent that we don't need to check. Pre-approval letters, proof of funds. Um, I don't, maybe you want to update the home inspect, um, keep the home inspection in here, right? That's cool. If this is where you want to park your documents so that you don't lose them, you can create custom folders over here. We don't look at these, right? We don't look at your custom folders. We only look at the stuff that you're turning in in these consultation under contract and close folders. So you can drop everything you want to drop in here. You can drop your marketing, your advertising, your pre-approval letters, your whatever, home inspections, all that kind of stuff. So you can keep it for your records, but we don't need to see it. Custom folders. The other thing, if you have a document that is not listed here that you ended up having to use, um, like a buyer possession after closing, for example, I'm just trying to think of something, right? Or buyer possession before closing rather, because this is a buyer. So if the buyer needs to take possession before closing, there's not a spot for that because it doesn't happen that frequently right? You can come up to these three dots and you can add a document. Use this sparingly. Try to use what's there. But if there's something that you need to add that's not there, you can say like buyer possession before closing, right? It's an agreement. Buyer to take possession one week before closing whatever you need your note to be, right? And then you can upload that buyer position before closing. I'm just gonna grab this so that you can see what it would look like. Now you have this additional document down there, right? So you can add a one-off document to this transaction if you need to. Cool? Man, we did it with one minute left. I know it's a lot to cover. It's all recorded. It's all going on YouTube. On your resources guide that I gave you guys, there's a link to answers.kw.com. It's got a whole slew of stuff on opportunities. And in fact, if you go to your little resources site, these little links at the top, um, if you click on them by applet, it'll take you straight to all of the answers articles. So this is everything about opportunities. So if you wanna remember how to set up those pipelines, there's articles. How did we do that offer? There's articles on it. Compliance, DocuSign, if you're a Dotleaf user from Greensboro, Earnest is a new integration that we just got. It's a company that handles the transfer of Earnest money directly from your client to the person holding the Earnest money which in North Carolina is usually the closing attorney, right? That's a new integration that's in there that you can use. The commissions tab and those client updates that we talked about today are here, okay? And then there's a couple of other things. My opportunities are missing. That's usually because you created them under your personal account instead of your team, right? But there's all that kind of stuff is there for you guys. And then of course, you can always ask me anything you need via text message so that I can get back to you as soon as possible. So I hope that this helps you guys. Tomorrow, like I said, we're gonna be going over websites and we got a really, really great new update on our websites today. So I'm gonna cover that this afternoon on Tech Tuesday with Carolina Educational Services, um, as well as our new branded magazine came out yesterday. So I'm gonna be covering that on Tech Tuesday with um, CES today. And then I'm going to be covering both of those things this week in boot camp as well. So we'll look at websites tomorrow. Um, 
designs and campaigns on Thursday. And then the second half of Thursday, we will look at tasks, um, the referral applet and stuff like that. Cool. Awesome. All right. Any questions before we go? Nobody? Awesome. All right. Have a great day, friends. I'll get this video put up as soon as I can. Thank you. We'll see you later.